Growing up in the 90s, Sonic the Hedgehog was king above all other video game mascots in my friend circle, and Sonic 2 was by and large everyone's favourite. I remember beating the game time and time again, and yes, that was in a single sit-in because I'm old enough to have not had save states. So 2020 is here and now Sega have released Sonic 2 yet again, but where is that Sonic 3 Knuckles Sega? I'm Gary from Nintendo Dads and it's time to review Sega Ages Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Sonic's main draw is a little deceiving. Speed is the first thing that comes to mind when most people think of Sonic the Hedgehog. However, in the early 1990s titles, that wasn't actually the case. Sonic wasn't really that blazingly fast. They took the time to have some tight platforming sections as well as those open stretches so you can hit your top speed and blaze along the land at your free will. Sonic 2 had a great balance when it came to pacing. Whether there's a high adrenaline action level such as the chemical plant, there was always a slower pace level like Casino Nights to weigh out the balance and make everything perfect. Sonic Mania's Drop Dash, a mechanic that helps Sonic reach his terminal velocity at an instant, is being added to this version of Sonic 2 as an optional extra, adding a new element for veterans of the series while helping the game flow for those skillful enough to use it at the right time. Unfortunately the drop dash can lead to parts of the game being exploitable or even broken at times. There's a few instances where I've used it and Sonic has fell off an edge because he was meant to stop automatically by the game but he carried on. It's not just a drop dash or added rumble which make this more than just a faithful port. Extra modes and settings have been added to this version of Sonic 2, including ring saver mode, an option that makes the game slightly easier. There's also a 100 ring challenge mode, where you must finish the first level with 100 rings at the fastest time. This is a really good mode, I really enjoyed it, it's pretty neat that it includes an online leaderboard as well, so you can see where you stack up against your friends or everybody else worldwide. A variety of display options are available, from the size of your screen, including the original 4.3 or a stretched out widescreen mode. The original 4.3 mode also has borders around it which can be swapped out for other ones. There's also scan lines for you old school nuts or a smoothing setting to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. Including this version is the additional of a playable Knuckles as well as the original Sonic and Tails, who was originally an unlockable character for those of you who owned Sonic and Knuckles and plugged Sonic 2 into the top of it. Having the choice of the three characters is definitely welcome, even if Tails doesn't fly in this version sadly and he is kind of just a palette swap version of Sonic. The original manual is also supposed to be available. I couldn't get this to actually work and I did find it a bit odd that it opens up a browser to view the manual rather than just being built into the game. The music and sound in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 hold up really well with those distinctly early 90s tunes bringing back a massive bag of nostalgia that hits you right across the face. The visuals definitely held up better on a portable screen. Being smaller and squashed in they look a little bit sharper whereas on the main TV they do show their age and they can be a little bit blurry and a little bit softer in the edges. The addition of save states also makes it the perfect portable game because you've got that option to just have a couple of minutes and then save and then carry on from wherever you was in the level at any time. The level design in Sonic 2 is still great, each level flows from start to end for the most part pretty well. There's only a few levels in the later half of the game with some terribly placed enemies that can bring the fun down a notch. As it stands, I would say that Sega Ages Sonic 2 for the Nintendo Switch is one of the better versions of Sonic 2 to be released to date. I have encountered a few more bugs and graphical glitches in this version than any other that I've ever played, however none of them actually affected the gameplay or broke the game in any sort of way, in fact most of them just made me chuckle a little bit. There was one glitch where Tails just stood there tapping his toe like he was waiting, however he was following Sonic at full speed. That's the sort of glitches that I've come across and they're all pretty funny to be fair. I still think that the mobile versions are the definitive versions of Sonic 2, however for the console experience this is the closest we've got to a perfect version. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of Sonic 2 for the Nintendo Switch. 
There's plenty more reviews here on the Nintendo Dads, and we also put out a couple of podcasts weekly, so check those out as well on your favourite podcast service. Until next time, bye-bye.